Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel, Circuit of Resin. Jacqueline and Shane coming back at you with something a little different this time. Um, you know, we do waves and waves. And, um, <laughs> and some more waves. And some more waves. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of one trick pony, but the pony does a really cool trick. <laughs> <laughs> but every now and then we experiment with things. Jacqueline sees something that catches her eye and wants to figure it out and learn about it. Oh yeah, I am on YouTube way more than I probably should be. Um, I watch a lot of Stone Coat Countertops. If you haven't checked out their YouTube channel, check it out. RK3 Designs, I am obsessed with. I love Rhonda, how she does her tutorials like twice a week. I don't know how she finds the time to do it, but they're amazing and every time it's different. Um, and it, it's, she does countertops too, and she does um, cornhole boards and just all kinds of different faux finishes. And I also watch Artsy Mad Woman all the time. Um, she does a lot of resin art. She does other stuff too, which is just super fun. I watch other ones, a lot of other channels, but those are the resin ones that I watch the most. But this one is just kind of something that we took to a show where I did like a faux stone finish and on a tabletop and then I did a wave on top of it and everyone seemed to really like it. It was a big deal at the event. Like Yeah, I was I was blown away like how many people walked up to it and they're just like, Wow, is this marble? You know, we're like, No and like they pick it up and like it's so light, like because it's not marble, you know, <laughs> but like it looked just like it. It was basically a lighter colored, you know, what like a what was it called? Venetian marble or whatever. It was gray. Yeah. <laughs> and with waves on it. And it looked killer and had all the sparkly cool effects. Like, and, um, yeah, so that's kind of what's going on here. And this video is, um, you'll see. A train wreck. <laughs> it's bad. But it's it's a lot. But, you know, you live and you learn. And uh, that's what we're doing here. This is, this is real. We're not trying to do it to where... It's something unrealistic, and like I've mentioned in other videos, how some people make things look so easy. And sure, when you've done it a million times, when you're just starting out, you make mistakes, and whatever, it kind of worked out. It worked out for the best. All right, so we're gonna get into it and uh, see what happens. <laughs> and we are jumping into this one because that's how I feel right now. I got a new box of mica powders. And I actually have them already mixed up, but I got this on, sorry if you see glare, I don't even know how to say it, Litter Bee Metallic Powders. Um, it comes in a set of a bunch of different colors, and I only mixed up a couple of them today because I wanted to see what they look like. They come in these cool little containers, um, it was just kind of nice because I don't use a lot of metallics, but it's nice to have them when I want to play with them. And... Uh, so that's what I did here. So I actually painted this board with these spray paints here before I even got the metallic powders. <laughs> so, you know, I've been kind of holding off on this. Um, I watch a lot of countertop epoxy uh, tutorials on YouTube. So this is kind of like my ode to like to show other people that even though I have no idea what I'm doing, and sure, I work with resin, but this is a totally different thing. I don't necessarily have a plan. I wanted to work, use my mica powders. It's doable. It's still gonna be halfway decent. I've done a couple of these in the past where I'm just kinda like, ah, oh, let's wing it. That's what we're doing today, and they always come out pretty decent. I plan on putting a wave on top of it, but typically we um, do waves on top of wood, and I like it, but at the same time, when we're setting up our booth, or on our website or whatever it may be it's nice to have something different you know show somebody else okay so what I have here is gray I mixed my Basham's pigments it's black and white pigment that I just made to my own gray this is from this set and it is a cream white I wish you can see it better on the camera because it's almost like an interference gold. It's a beautiful color and I made it super translucent. I have a little bit of clear. I have just solid white. This is their copper powder. And then this one is the antique gold. They're all beautiful colors. 
And right now, I'm not sure what we're gonna do, but we're gonna kind of put it all on there and see where it goes. I mixed mostly gray because I do want it to be almost like a natural, I mean, the idea right now is to do a, a granite color. So if you've seen, like me, I watch RK3 designs all the time. And this is what they do. And I hope I mixed enough resin. I'm pretty sure I did. It's 18 by 18 and I mixed about seven ounces. But, I mean, I'll make it work. I'm gonna go in subtle with the antique gold and just kind of put it all around. And I'm saving some in my cups just so that if I want more, there's more. It looks like I'm already getting scared, but it's gonna work out. <laughs> and if it's not, you won't be watching the video. I'll do some more blobby sections because this color is really pretty. All the colors are really pretty. So this doesn't work like regular mica powder. It, it's so, um, like you can see the movement in it. I hope my hand hasn't been in the way the whole time. You can see the movement in it, but it's so fine. Oh, I almost forgot. White. Hopefully this doesn't look like me. <laughs> Never mind that distraction. <laughs> uh, where were we? I laid down the cream white and it's the most beautiful color ever. And now white. Which I kind of want subtle. Just in skinny little random places. And I think I'm gonna keep the clear for later. I wish I had poured more resin because this is gonna really, I feel like I didn't, I don't have enough. So is that this moment when she actually realized she did not have enough. <laughs> not anywhere close. I probably should have had at least another five ounces of resin for this. You can see not only because it's sped up, but because I was sitting there frantically trying to figure out what the heck to do. Smeared across the board. Um, I made mud. I mean, it's very like my A. <laughs> but the goal was to not this. Definitely not this. Well, but whenever the veins started coming in and everything started kind of coming together, like it, it got kind of like stony, but it, yeah, I mean. At this point I was playing, you know, just trying to get more resin on there, trying to play with veins and things like that. Oh, but yeah, cream white. <laughs> it didn't work. Oh, she tried. Lot of surface tension. And when you have mica powders, you see all the movement, so just be careful how you touch. Because I just dragged that resin and now there's a line. I kind of want to just do, like, see where that takes me. Some, I got resin on my fingers anyway. I actually really like that. I'm fascinated by the people who do this all the time. It's so impressive because they can do such natural looking things. They're so whimsical and they have so much control over it. It's definitely all coming together. You just have to get all the surface tension out. And if you don't like one, you just kind of cover it up. So pretty much at this point, it was a lost cause. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you smear it, you try to save it with alcohol, and 
try to create a some... more natural finish. Yeah, and this is where she goes all like crazy with her spray paint. And I'm like, ooh, I'm gonna spray alcohol on it, and then I'm gonna spray paint it, and it's gonna work out, and everything's gonna be okay. I at this point, I was just trying to do. I mean, all the techniques that I've seen. You know, there's some, put some spray paint, and then I hit it with some alcohol, some isopropyl, um, 91%, and it did some cool stuff, just not, it, it, it still couldn't save it. It just didn't work, but that's okay. Who's ready for round two? I got some really cool effects in this that no one is ever gonna see because we're gonna cover this up. Got a little ahead of myself and didn't have a plan. I am not a professional. Can't do it without a plan. This is the metallic powders. I'm gonna switch them up a little this time. Um, I am also using this Ninja Black from Eye Candy. This is deep black. It has a little bit more of a silver. Hopefully you can see that. Copper. Antique gold. And what is my new favorite? Cream white. This is, total, this is very much like an interference powder. And yes, I reuse all of my sticks. They're still good. They have two sides. They're still good. That's why they're all dirty. Okay, so the plan this time, so let, uh, I didn't have enough resin. It's super, I mean, it's not flat. I tried to re-level the piece because I taped the edges this time. I tried to re-level it and I couldn't even level it because it's so, so bad. But we're gonna do like a cup pour. Ah, oh, no, I lied. Yes, we are, but. First, I think part of the reason why I I didn't do a quick grease coat. It's probably more than enough. It's literally oh again. Everybody makes this look so easy on YouTube. Oh, anybody can do it, and anybody can. You just need a plan, not what I did. All right, all nicely coated. Okay, like I said, a cut pour. This is like a super shoddy, it just literally is to make it so that the resin that I put on there just moves more easily and just has more of a natural look instead of this where I was frantically trying to smear it because I didn't put enough resin and basically everything just looks like mud instead of, yeah, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Okay, I'm just going to layer it in the cup. It's going to be a lot of black. This ninja black. I did it super, super light, and I know in here it looks super dark, but as I pour it, but because I want to see some of this detail come through, and we'll see, I'm just going to layer it all in. It's my tea gold, it's a beautiful color. I wish I could see this. I'm trying, I'm not gonna go in any random order. Just doing it. Need to get more of this in there so that it's a nice predominant color.
this is the what is it deep black it's very much like a silvery color looks very natural stone that's what gave me the idea <gasps> To do this in the first place these colors look just like a natural very very beautiful stone and I know this looks like a hot mess but this is way better than my non plan I had before and came out with this There's still more if I need to, I'll scoop them out. I did 10 ounces of resin for this and it's 18 by 18. So we'll see how this goes. This is so much fun to watch. I'll just watch it come out. That is so bright and pretty. And nothing like what I expected. <laughs> like nothing. Okay, so I'm gonna pour some more in here. Oh. It's very gold. Legend in all honesty, I wasn't expecting. I know I did a lot. I'm kind of sad because you lo I lost all of the cream. I've seen this before where they do this and they give it one quick stir. And we're going to go back in. I shouldn't have made that U turn on here because now it's. It just doesn't look so natural. Okay, well, you live and you learn. 10 ounces wasn't enough. Let's see. This <laughs> is such a mess. <laughs> I'm gonna put just some of, uh, I think this is bronze. Just gonna follow it in. I'm gonna do this with all of the colors, actually. Just to kind of fill in some of the gaps.
All right, this is already appearing to be quite a train wreck of a video. So let's make this have some kind of useful information. So I'm sanding, but not all of it. I'm just gonna sand really lightly on the places where I know I'm gonna put my resin because I'm gonna put a wave over this, right? So let's make sure we get a nice mechanical bond so it doesn't delaminate. Number two, it's, oh well, I guess that's not ready. Clean the dust. I use alcohol wipes. You could use a paper towel with alcohol and wipe it off. I just find this easier because then I have these to clean my hands with and whatever it may be. So clean your dust off. There we go. And it helps when it's been sitting there, it cleans off the dust too. Number two, maybe three. It's really cold today. I shouldn't be pouring resin. Look at your resin bottle. It tells you there's ideal temperatures. I think we're like 50 degrees here. It's not ideal temperature. This is really close. I usually do it on the floor, but I turn my heat gun on low while I'm stirring and make sure you spin your cup. I don't think it's gonna melt the cup, but who knows, hasn't happened yet. So stir with your heat gun on. It heats up the resin, it stirs better, it's gonna release bubbles better. It's, you're just gonna be a lot happier, moves better. Uh, I also, heat up my substrate, my board, my whatever I'm pouring it on. Because if this is cold, it's going to instantly drop the temperature of your resin. So I will sit here and just heat it up. I'll heat it up underneath. I will heat it up up top and just heat it up a little bit. It's not gonna hurt. In reality, I shouldn't be pouring this at this temperature, but it's gonna go on a wall and I'm not that worried about it. If it was a table, wouldn't be doing it. But hopefully there's some sort of useful information in this video. Alright. Here's my clear. But of course I mix. Because I mix everything a ton. Because if it's not mixed, you're going to regret it. <laughs> it'll get sticky, it'll be soft, it will get pits, it'll do all kinds of weird things. And because not everything possible that's gone wrong in this video has gone wrong already, but I somehow got black paint from this paintbrush that I thought I cleaned on my stir stick. Can you maybe see that? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's here. Yeah. On my stir stick. And somehow it managed to get into my resin. So, perfect. Perfect. Alright, pouring this in. I didn't make this really pretty design to cover it up with a completely blue wave. Um, I'm going to use translucent blue because that's what I use a lot of the time. And I'm hoping <laughs> it doesn't turn brown because uh, these colors are really bright and I'm hoping it doesn't turn a really ugly color. We'll see. Uh, I'm gonna do a lot of clear because again I didn't do all this to hide it. I want to be able to see it. for the next wave. Here we go. Oh, and just a disclaimer. I did heat it. It's cold again. So I heated up my resin or I stirred my resin with a heat gun 
disappointed on it. I I typically, I didn't do it on camera because I have it really spaced out. And don't heat up your resin until it's like warm. You literally just want to take the chill off so it moves again. You could, I mean, resin cures with heat. So you could potentially have an unusable cup of resin if you heat it up too much. So just wanted to put that out there. It's a great tip. I learned that from Artsy Mad Woman. Um, she has a great, great channel if you want to watch that. It's a bunch of, she used to do nothing but resin, but now she does all kinds of other things. And she's just super, uh, not afraid to make mistakes. <laughs> but I really like, I really like her show. But uh, clear, using the other side of my popsicle stick. Yeah, that side's really dirty, but the other side is clean. So here we go. Stir it up really well. And I'm also gonna do some charcuterie boards that are lined up next to this, so we're just gonna watch this and fast forward. Well, if you made it this far, thanks. <laughs> uh, it was a little bit of a disaster, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, you watched it, clearly, but I think it came out pretty good. Hold on. Yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> happy with it. I mean, ta-da! <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it came out, it, it's super cool. I know it's kind of far, but I know after this, we'll show some close-ups of um, all the details that came in. And it just looks really cool because even through all the blue, you can still see all the details. And uh, it just kind of sets it apart. I haven't seen anybody do waves like this on on something like a faux stone like this before. Um, I love it. I love those mica powders. Um, but it's super cool. And all the YouTubers that we watch on the regular basis, they're amazing too. So yes, <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah, super happy with it, and just all the cool like iridescent colors that come through. And when you look at this thing in the sunlight it's you just stare at it and stare at it and you just find all these cool little i don't know like what are they called? easter eggs or whatever like it's just it's one of those pieces that you can just look at yeah it's different you'll find something different every time you look at it and little spots of extra depth and color and pearlescence and just super fun stuff and kind of kind of want to do more I know, so do I. I want to do more tabletops like this. Uh, <laughs> I find a table that someone wanted to throw out or whatever it may be or on, um, you know, different outlets where people go ahead and put them for sale for like $10 because they just want to get rid of them or on the side of the curb. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It sets, it's just, again, it is different. People don't do this. They'll do a wave. We do it on wood typically, but this is, it's different and it, it gets a lot of attention. Definitely gets a lot of attention. Yeah. So. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Yes, if you did, go ahead and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Oh yes, like and subscribe. Ringa the bell. <laughs> um, follow the Instagrams and um, stay tuned for more because who knows what craziness we're going to be up to next week. Hopefully it's not this crazy. <laughs> I can't handle that one. <laughs> All right, see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Thanks.